Can everybody say hello? Simra, where are you? My phone is making a gun. Simra, Simra, come say hello. Where are you, honey? Hi. Hello. Oh. <laughs> you know, if I open my arms, whoever is closest just goes into me. I love you guys and I miss you. Simra, what happened to your shirt? Mm -hmm. Guys, one of my babies. I was going to the yeah, you go to the doctor? I'm going to get my doctor. I'm going to get my doctor. I'm going to get my doctor. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mommy! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, my baby's sick. Mm -hmm. He's so sick. Say hi. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Hi. What's your name again? Hala Nakaiza. Hala Nakaiza? Naka is the who? Hala Naka is the Uh-huh, and what's, what's the last name? No one pushed you out of your name. You were. You failed. Your last name is a Jew. She's, she's confused, okay? <laughs> she knows her last name. How have you guys been? Okay, now everybody wants to be carried. This is a catastrophe. Hala is being carried because she's sick, guys. Hala is sick, Yeah? You wanna go? See this one? Simmer literally wants to be carried. Okay, everybody say hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. Hi. What are we doing today? We're gonna bake cake. We're gonna Happy bake cake. cake. Nima, there's an international audience. But you're just there. <laughs> okay guys, so we're going to be baking today and what do we tell our lovely people? We tell them welcome to the channel. Hello. Hello. Okay, if you're joining us for the first time, we're very pleased and lucky to have you. This is a channel about beauty, lifestyle, fashion and travel and basically everything else in between. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you. Thank you for the loyalty and always tuning in to watch us racing yeah. you. Okay guys, we will see you in the kitchen. Let's go get our aprons. Bake time! Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go. So right now I've come to the bulk store. I'm going to be buying some icing and what else do I need from here? I need icing and wait, hold up on. I'm thinking, what the hell did I come for? Oh, I need icing and fondant. So I did already buy the other stuff. They're already in the car. I forgot. And there's a cake board. And then after that. We're gonna go and get some icing sugar. And after icing sugar, we should be pretty much done because that's all we can. So this is quite fine, but we need this because you need this to make the buttercream at home. Um, whenever I'm getting my icing sugar, I there's weighing scales in store like one over there so I weigh it already like pound 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 as I'm going to use it because I do not have a weighing scale guys 
I know, I know. As a baker, it's embarrassing. But that means I'm a good baker because I measure stuff with my eyes and it always comes out. So yeah, so I'm just going to be taking some buttercream, I mean icing sugar and bake it. I put on a pound. See, I told you, I'm good at weighing things with my eyes. Look at that. It is exactly a pound. You were saying? <laughs> and then we're gonna put on the next bag. I'm gonna take three pounds because I do not need much buttercream today. This aisle is every baby's dream. Candy and more candy and more candy than you can eat. So I'm going to be getting the girls like some candy to eat and that should be okay, hopefully. All right. flower which is over here and that is the robin and then I use a uh, baking powder this is my preferred baking powder in all of them so I just save this okay and the reason I'm doing this here is if I had to do it here this is what it would be like you see that I may just make a mess the KitchenAid comes with these kinds of things so this is what you use to slide ingredients in You start on the low setting because you want you don't want the flour to jump back up in your face, right? So you just start low and then as it starts to incorporate, you can increase the, the pace at which you're working. Now, naturally this thing, of course, for it to be able to rotate, it means it's not reaching the skirtings of this of this bow. So you stop it and you raise it up and then you go around the ball like that just to clean it up and bring all the dough in the middle. You see like that dough that is not being touched. You want to bring it into the middle. And then you just keep adding the dough until, well, I personally just keep doing this until I reach the consistency I'm looking for. cupcake is going to go we're making a giant cupcake for the second cake design it's going to be for um, a baby's first year birthday and it's going to be like a smash cake always um, always heat your cake on the floor so that well not on the floor like if you have anything that you can use so that the cake um, gets all the air bubbles out like they come to the top that's what this hitting does. So the cake will be compact basically when you cut it. They won't be like, you know how you eat um, Amanda's here and then there's the kevituli in there. You don't want that in your cake. It's unprofessional. Let's get this in the oven. All right, my beautiful people. Cake's in the oven. Um, table has been tidied up, you know, wiped down and everything. 
So very soon we'll be beginning the fun part, the part you're here to see, which is, you know, piling up the cake, getting the decor on and stuff like that. Remember we're making two cakes, a giant cupcake. I actually have made this cake before, like this cake design, I've made it before on my Instagram page. You can find it there. If you do not follow me, it is Jazeera-with-e. I do not know what you've been waiting for. I actually have not had breakfast and neither have I had lunch. And it is almost 3 p.m. It's a bad habit of mine. So now we just gotta wait for the cakes to finish cooking. I'll show them to you guys in the oven. Before I do that, I know you're going, to, if you're a professional baker and you're watching this, you're going to tell me, no, you should unpack the cakes in there, blah, blah, blah. I only have one day to do this, number one. And I only have one oven inside this house, number two. Number three, that oven is not that big. So of course I know it would be better if I put um, the cakes in an oven where they're more spacious. Normally if I like have two days to do this or whatever, like I, I do it that way. But right now we are bad for time and tomorrow is also another busy day for me. So yeah. Oh my God. You never know you're dozing until you close your eyes and they do not want to open again. I forgot to show you when, when I'm putting the cakes in, um, there is this cloth you wrap around the cake. It allows the cakes to remain flat. When, you, when you're making the cake, it remains flat. It does not get that canopy thing. However, if I'm making a cake for like for home or somebody like the client wants a cake for home and stuff like that, I do let it bulge over because people like that crack, you know, that organic crack. It looks really pretty and it's enjoyable to eat. But the fact that for the baked cake, you do not want to lose all that cake because when it rises, guess what happens? I gotta cut it off and trash it. But normally my little people eat it anyway. And my friends, we, we eat it. But otherwise, if it rises, that's all cake you're gonna have to cut off. Because when you're layering it up as you're, you know, stacking it, you need the layers to be as flat as possible. So this is how the cake is looking. Let's open this real quick. Mm, that's how they're all looking. decide on what they want to watch <laughs> everybody needs to have a mini TV so that they can get to watch what they all want so she's watching Coco Melon I think she's watching pepper pig and then I do not know for the love of me what this is even but yeah that's them making buttercream simple process I use butter and I use butter and icing sugar I get from the bulk store this is the butter I use uh, interesting fun fact about making buttercream guys apparently I learned from an expert online that the cheaper the better because you want it to be as cowy as possible because cheaper butter is lighter it's pale yellow right so when you're heating it remember the more you cream it the whiter it gets and then when you add in your icing it becomes even whiter and then when you put in like a clear vanilla instead of like a, a you know the colored dark one you're home unless unless you're using the vanilla parts of course but other than that buy cheap butter okay all right so let's just go ahead and uh, eat it. so right now it is kind of stuck in my whisk because you know it wasn't exactly room temperature but I don't mind. Okay guys, so we have, I don't know if you can tell by the color difference, but I have a icing in here. So this is the icing and underneath is the buttercream. Like of course it's definitely going to be you know, not as white as the icing. But yeah, I've been heating it for a couple of minutes, so now I'm just going to go ahead and start um, doing this together. You start from a low whatever, or else you'll get a lot of dust. Um, and then you just incorporate them. 
and at the beginning it's going to look like you know like cheese that you've broken up you see that but eventually it's going to mix up depending on how much butter buttercream I need but my measurement the ratio is 250 grams of butter to one pound or one pound of, of icing and that's it but see that and that's on the low setting so then I can go higher and I get it to incorporate really really nicely is like you know kind of being left behind so you want to get that in there as well Bye. using a spatula if you do not have these on hand they're the best thing you can ever have they literally always get you know all the ingredients so that you don't leave anything behind all the butter after that i'm going to go in with the next pound So in here I've just put some vanilla and both the, you know, both the extract, sorry, the emulsion and the extract. And then I also added milk. So normally I will put um, the whipping cream milk, you know, the heavy milk, 35%, but there's none of that in the fridge. And I have used this in the past before. This one is, I think, 3% and it was okay. I just try not to go all out because the other one is heavier so it gives a very nice texture. This one is runny so I have to be careful and mindful of that. So now I'm just going to incorporate this and buttercream should be done. So we're going to start icing the cake. Time check, it is 5 p.m. Oh, wait, what? It's not 5, it's 6. It's 6 p.m. Where's my phone? It's 6 p.m. So we are going to start icing the cake. I think I'm going to start with the round one, then after we'll do the cupcake. And when I finish, I'll put it in the fridge so that, you know, it sets. And then I don't know if I'm going to do the fondant stuff today, honestly, I don't know. But since it's 6 p.m., we'll see. We'll see. But if I do not, still, I'll do that tomorrow afternoon. So I'll definitely make sure I share that with you guys. Okay. in here the top sits in here and that's the cakes I just take them out I cut off the top put them together that's it
with fondant and it's like chirpy like this, it means it's not yet ready. For it to be ready, it has to be elastic. But you notice the only one that's elastic is the white one, not the pink, because I've just mixed the colors together. So I'm going to mix them until I get like a uniform color and then I'll go ahead and add more pink because I want the pink to be at least deeper than this. Like not a hot pink, but deeper. gotta keep going but now I'm going to add in the other pink so that you know I hit two birds with one stone I get it ready but at the same time as I'm you know incorporating the color and as you see we're pretty much now almost there because even the pink is stretching along with the white so yay oh and also don't forget to always use cornstarch cornstarch helps you not to stick your you know, fondant on the work surface. I'm using the table because I did sanitize it prior to this, so I know it is safe. There is this mat. It is a, a fondant mat. It has an interesting material. I don't know if I do this, you see that? So it makes it so easy when you're working with fondant that to a point you may not actually need the cornstarch because it prevents it from sticking around and it gives it a very smooth finish. So, yeah, so that's that. a long way with this color so I always try to be like very moderate just a tiny drop so this is the end result pink and I think I'm pretty satisfied with this because it I don't want it to be pinker, you know, than this, like a hot pink because it's for a baby anyway. The first time I did this cake, it was a deeper pink than this, but I think I prefer this one. So I won't go any further. And I'm going to roll it out using probably this one, but they're pretty much the same thing. This is a, it's called a fondant rolling pin. And this one helps you, it, it has this measuring thing, that's what I like about it. And these circles, they don't only help you like measure the thickness of the fondant, but it has measurements on it too. I don't know if you see the writing. Um, there, yeah. So it can help you measure, you know, whatever it is you're working with, like how wide you've stretched it. So if I now want a 10 inch circle, I know I'll stretch it from reaching up to this 10 and this 10, like that. And these rings, they help you measure the thickness of you know the fondant that you're that you're working with but that's pretty much it
I'll just go ahead and first emphasize the curves of the how do they call this? You know how the cake design will have like those, you know. So I just want to emphasize this a little more, just a little bit. You know the crumbs from yeah, yeah, yeah getting everywhere so i'm going to put on the second actual coat and then we're going to go ahead and put on the the fondant hexagons they're going to be like the, the color block like i mentioned so it's going to be orange gray dark blue i'm forgetting what the fourth color is so i'm going to make the buttercream put it on the cake and then put it in the fridge to sit and while it does that I'll go ahead and make the different the four different shades of fondant hexagons like so we'll mix the fondant colors and after that roll it all out and cut out hexagon shapes and after that we'll dress them on the cake and it should be done Recording. The devil is a liar. <laughs> I was saying that we're going to start doing the hexagons right now, um, like mixing the the color into the fondant, and then we're gonna cut them out. So colors, we're going to use four. This is orange. This is teal. I do not know if you see that. Why isn't it focusing? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, and then this is going to be royal blue. 
and the other one is gonna be gray. Remember, always use your basic science, you know, the red, yellow, blue science of when you don't have a color, you can mix it up and find that color. Normally, I do that with most of my colors, but anyway, this is the hexagon that we're gonna be using as the card out. Um, this is about yay size in my palms. And to make the gray, we're going to be mixing black with white to make gray fondant. To avoid wastage, you start with the white and instead add the black to it, right? You build it up. That way you don't end up putting too much black. You know, if you start with black and try to add white to it, that's, you know, kind of redundant. You get what I mean? You'll just end up wasting a lot of fondant. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. navy blue but I failed to achieve that and with my colors the more color I put it becomes bitter it makes the fondant or the icing bitter so I decided to just go with black so um, on my template the bottom the bottom starts with like these so what I've done like I literally just cut the full hexagon into half so that I'll put that at the base and now I'm just going to put some you know buttercream over this that buttercream is so far So that's our first piece and we're going to just keep going around diagonal like this and keep doing our thing.
There you go. Honey, honey, you want some? You want purple? Okay, so right about now, I think we are done. I wanted it to have that kind of... I don't know. I'm thinking whether I should make them meet here in the middle at the front, because this is going to be the front. And then I wanted to have a design at the back as well, like that kind of V going out. And then this is a V coming in. That we're looking good. I like it. Let me know what you guys think. The abstract and the color block, you know, and the hexagon. I've always wanted to do this kind of cake actually, so I'm glad I finally got somebody I could do it for. Yeah. <laughs> Are you proud? I'm proud of it. Well, Sorry, I'm speaking sluggishly. I am tired. The crowd goes wild. Okay, that is me going off track. Like when I start talking things that don't make sense, you know. It means my brain, the wires, they're no longer like. <laughs> Anywho, um, I think I'm going to figure out how to put his name. I might cut out these tiny thingies to make his name it might go across the top or i might not even name it at all because i feel like it might mess the design i don't know we'll see i'm going to spell it out using these letters i use this letter cutout so this is k for the first letter of his name i literally just um, i think i'm going to be using green the green hexagons because as you can see i have leftovers so i'm going to just go ahead and press this out Oh man, I forgot to dip this. Jazz, jazz. Okay, so as you can see, so this is how it's going to look. I don't know if you can see that. I put it on black so you see the background. So that's K. And I'm going to just, you know, spell the rest of his name out. Put it on top. And we'll be good to go. Oh my god, 